We often refer to the Blue River chipset during our courses here on the SDVOE Academy. That chipset being the hardware which brings SDVOE endpoints to life. During this course, we're going to go under the hood and explore the chipset itself to better understand the differences between the Field Programmable Gate Array, or FPGA chip, and the Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Yep, you guessed it, or ASIC for short, and discover why each type would be used. Let's begin by explaining why the chipset is there in the first place. The microchip was invented by these two chaps in 1959 and contained computer circuitry called an integrated circuit. Tiny little electronic transistors and interconnects on a wafer-thin piece of silicon smaller than your fingernail. The microchip revolutionised how electronics were manufactured and today microchips are used in billions of electronic devices and are very much part of our everyday lives. And it's thanks to the microchip they were able to combine one of these, one of these, and one of these into a tiny, neat little box, which fits perfectly into one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. When an electronics manufacturer builds a product, there's generally one main chip that performs the product's function. Now, there are three classes of device which might serve this purpose. CPU, FPGA, and ASIC. Now, whether you have an AV over IP widget, a computer, or even a calculator, there's a chip on board that device which is going to do the job that you need it to do. So, to begin with, let's discuss probably the most recognised of these three classes, the CPU. Found inside pretty much every computer on the planet, the CPU, or Central Processing Unit, is arguably the most flexible of our three chips. It's programmable, which means it can run lots of different software applications by responding to a bunch of instructions it's been given. More importantly, it's able to switch between these software applications instantly, because that's what you expect from your computer, right? Computers do a vast array of different things, and the CPU enables it to do exactly that. It just doesn't do these things, well, brilliantly. If you've ever seen inside a computer which does lots of things, you'll see that the CPU is, is quite a chunky old chip, which is completely surrounded by big heat sinks and fans and things which have the sole purpose in life to keep the old boy cool. Not you. <laughs> If you've ever heard a powerful computer really working hard, you'll know just how noisy it can be. Even the modern day versions and all this noise and cooling consumes a lot of power, meaning that the CPU needs to focus. Shh. That's better. And all this noise and cooling consumes a lot of power, so that means the CPU needs to focus on remaining a jack of all trades. And that means, of course, that they're a complete master of absolutely none of them. As we head over to the other choices, we're going to leave the CPU with this thought. Anything that the CPU can do, the FPGAs and ASICs can do far better. The difference is that a nanosecond later, the CPU can do something different, leaving the FPGAs and ASICs to continue the previous job perfectly. You can turn it on again now. Ooh. Turning to the other choices, we have the FPGA, or Field Programmable Gate Array, and the ASIC, or Application Specific Integrated Circuit. 
The ASIC, as its name implies, is an integrated circuit built specifically for one application. It can be optimised to perform that application with the highest performance, the lowest cost and the lowest power consumption of any of the three chip types. Whereas an FPGA is programmable, field programmable gate array, but it's not programmable like a CPU. Where a CPU is fixed hardware built to execute a series of programmable instructions, the FPGA is actually hardware that's programmed to act like other hardware. So, in reality, the function of your favourite ASIC could be programmed into an FPGA, and you would then achieve identical performance between the two chips. The FPGA, however, needs a lot more silicon to accommodate this flexibility, and that comes at a significant cost in dollars and power consumption compared to the ASIC. The reasons why a hardware engineer would choose between an FPGA or an ASIC chip have got absolutely nothing to do with which one is better, because neither is better. In the SDVOE world, we're focused on an AV over IP, so we're going to leave CPUs behind and focus on ASICs and FPGAs and think about how they get adopted by manufacturers. FPGAs are programmable, we know that now, and they can be configured to match the function and performance of an ASIC, we know that as well. But this configurability means more power consumption and a much higher cost per chip. No matter though, because there's another very important consideration a manufacturer needs to make when deciding between FPGAs and ASICs, when it's time to take the product to market. You see, it's all very well trying to make a product absolutely perfect before putting it on the shelves. However, that would result in manufacturers running out of cash long before it became ready. In reality, a manufacturer just needs to get the thing ready to be useful before getting it to market. While a single FPGA chip is more expensive than an ASIC, it does allow the manufacturer to get it to a sellable product far quicker. While the cost of the product will be more expensive in the early adopter market, the manufacturer is able to continue the R&D effort to develop and test the functionality of the product. If the manufacturer ultimately plans to sell millions of these devices, then they'll plan to develop ASICs once all the functionality of the product has been fully validated using the FPGAs. There's a lot more to do when developing an ASIC, and it's extremely expensive in both time and cash to develop one. Once the ASIC is ready, products will transition to the cheaper per unit ASIC to reduce costs or improve margins, which in turn will pay off the huge ASIC development costs that have been incurred. Remember when 4K TVs were first introduced to the market and they ran up to upwards of $30,000 each? Well, that's because they all had FPGA chips, and now the same 4K TV is a tenth of that price because it uses, you guessed it, the ASIC chip instead. In our example here, the total cost for using an FPGA is cheaper until say 500,000 or so units have been shipped. And if you know that you're never going to ship that many, it's hard to justify the ASIC investment. Remember, it's entirely possible that a manufacturer doesn't intend to sell millions. They might be developing a very specific product to a closed market, such as military or healthcare, for an example. And with such low production numbers, it might not be financially viable to develop an ASIC at all. SDVOE offers products based on FPGA and ASIC, helping to keep a broad array of Alliance members supplied with chips. In fact, it's the only AV over IP ASIC ecosystem available. 
As the demand for FPGA chips continue to exceed the global supplies available, it's worth considering that the pro-AV market has to wait in line with far bigger electronics market sectors for FPGA chips, often having to wait over a year for availability, while SDVOE ASIC chips are available to manufacturers right now.